The construction industry, a once thriving sector, is another victim that came to a grinding halt during one of the strictest lockdowns in recent years. In the State of the Province address delivered by Gauteng Premier David Makura in February 2020, one of the key priorities that the provincial government set their eyes on changing as part of the growing Gauteng Together 2030 strategy was infrastructure. The idea was to develop the skilled workforce for each growth industry and build enabling infrastructures. But the global pandemic put a pin on these plans. So I think some of the vulnerabilities remain around um, being able to adhere to the lockdown regulations. You would remember that when we started with the lockdown regulations at level five, um, a lot of sectors of the economy were literally shut down. That impacted our um, ability to be able to respond to the infrastructure needs. Um, so construction industry had shut down, had shut down but also the um, the, the, the lower down the line industry. So the supply of construction material had closed. Um, we struggled quite a bit to even access um, manufactured goods um, and, and, and pro provide, providing our, our sites with services and implements. The second vulnerable is the fact that construction by its nature, especially the brick and mortar construction that we still rely heavily on, is labor intensive. So you have sites... Uh, um, that have a number of people working on site active all the time. So you do have um, the possibility of an outbreak or the possibility of COVID spreading in a site. Um, that then gives uh, gives rise to other aspects of, of delays that we never really would have um, made provision for. Fortunately, out of all the active sites that we're running in response to the health infrastructure um, preparations, we've only had an outbreak at one of our sites. On the 23rd of July, the Gauteng Treasury tabled the Special Adjustment Budget with the aim to strengthen frontline services in the fight against COVID-19 and to boost the economy. Nomandu Ngomora Lehoko Gauteng MEC for Finance and E-Government added 4 billion rand to the budget. The Special Adjustment Budget allocates the following resources as follows, including that have been prioritized within the existing baseline as indicated above. A total of 5.9 billion is allocated to the health response and will be used to do the following. The first one will be to provide health infrastructure, including the refurbishment of the facilities and build and build field hospitals. The second one will be to procure necessary medical equipment. The third one will be to ensure that the provision of personal protective equipment, oxygen and test kits are there. And the fourth one will be hiring and remuneration of frontline health personnel, which is a key component of the COVID-19 response. This infrastructure budget also, also contributes to other provincial priorities, such as education, health and human settings. Despite the decreases in some departmental budgets, special provincial budget um, adjustment budget sees an increase in infrastructure budget by 5.3%, from 11.6 billion to 12.2 billion. The increase is driven by the COVID-19 infrastructure requirements in health, where the budget for infrastructure has more than doubled from 2 billion to 4.2 billion. This budget will be used to provide additional health facilities and refurbish existing ones in the response to COVID-19 pandemic. This proposed budget protects the infrastructure investment in the province. However, more rigorously, measures must be exerted in improving our job creation targets and their achievements. The capacity of the spending of departments must be improved in order to avert the key risk that these budgets are not fully spent by the end of the 2020-2021 financial year. Through our infrastructure budget, we'll continue to focus on doing the right thing in the right manner to get optimum results following good governance principles. MEC Ngomora Lehoko further explained that infrastructure is a fundamental enabler towards the delivery of services and creation of jobs. How will MEC Tasni Mutara allocate these funds? 
doesn't it's not necessarily a 12 billion increase to the department but it's a 12 billion increase to the infrastructure um, needs of the province as a whole a lot of it is definitely going to the the health infrastructure, as we can see, um, we have um, con invested considerably in nine of our hospitals. Um, we're also putting up um, and just upgrades, upgrading our own hospitals and our own facilities just to be able to make sure that even beyond COVID, we have facilities that are able to withstand and withhold any type of um, medical outbreak or, or pandemic as we see now. A big portion of that um, infrastructure budget is also going to, um, to, to local municipalities and services because, of course, infrastructure, top structures depend heavily on um, whether the, they are adequately serviced. A big part of that infrastructure spend is also going to the education sector just to be able to expand on what we're already doing in terms of um, the rollout of, of schools. Um, you would know that as a province, Gauteng, we have really um, championed the, the improved facility and bigger, better schools, especially in townships. And that's where we um, extremely remain extremely vulnerable um, for to the COVID pandemic. Um, the fact that townships are very, very heavily populated, densely populated, our schools um, need adequate space. So the, the, the increase in the funding is still in line with the, provinc uh, the provincial priorities um, in terms of just the infrastructure across. And um, we're still sticking to that. And we still, we are fortunate in that we have a number of hospitals and public facilities that we improved on as opposed to putting up um, a new temporary structure, which post COVID would be turned down, um, have to be torn down. So infrastructure um, investment and spending that we're doing now will even reap the benefits long beyond um, COVID. Even though there is an increase in the infrastructure budget, the vulnerability around construction still looms over this sector. We still rely heavily on labour and we're not going to change that. I think what is important is that we, ad we are adhering to all the regulations around COVID. So screening and 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 um, the testing continues. Screening at all our sites. You would know that because we in the public uh, um, infrastructure, we work, for instance, on all hospitals. So our own internal staff, as well as the staff of construction companies, are at risk daily. Um, but I think what we are doing is adhering to the regulations, uh, making sure that all um, things are put in place in terms of just making sure that 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 COVID um, isn't spread through ourselves, but also that the vulnerabilities and the risks are kept at a low, as low as possible. Um, Believing that construction is uh, a, an, an industry that it catalyzes and is a catalyst for job creation, we don't think that um, removing the labor will help us, especially in the current economic um, crisis and current economic conditions. So the labor intensive intensivity must continue, but also just the expansion of being able to stimulate the manufacturing industry um, and also just the um, the supply of, 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 of tools as well as um, construction materials will bode well for, for keeping the economy going. The increase in Gauteng's provincial budget comes at a time when the International Monetary Fund is estimating a contraction in global GDP. Our economy, our country's economy had already entered a technical recession due to a number of factors, including low business and consumer confidence, low growth in investment and constrained fiscal space. I miss the, the growing of funding needs for the state-owned enterprises. Current forecasts suggest that the housing economy will contract by 6% in 2020. That is why we are taking eight additional steps to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on the provincial economy and protect particularly the poor, the vulnerable during these difficult times. Honorable members, we are caring governments and that's why our country, using limited resources at our disposal, is implementing one of the largest COVID-19 interventions in developing well. Through the 500 billion economic stimulus package that was announced by our president, Babu Ramaphosa, in April, various social relief measures have been rolled out through the existing social grant system 
to protect the vulnerable households in Gauteng and indeed the rest of the country during these difficult times. In addition, economic relief measures are being implemented to firstly preserve the economy and jobs, including jobs. All these economic relief measures help the construction sector in particular. You've always got a situation where um, you've got to make decisions between competing priorities. And given the fact that we still suffer with the triple challenges of poverty, inequality and high rates of unemployment, we often made uh, decisions leaning towards social services. So increased social grants, increased um, the services in terms of health, um, even services in terms of education. However, not um, not increasing the spend on infrastructure also to just support those services. So I don't think it was, I think it's just a decision that you have to make at a particular time. We always have competing priorities. The competing priorities will remain and sometimes change. And we've just um, made those decisions. I think given the fact that even big construction companies are facing um, liquidation and shutting down and closing their doors, um, it also it also shows that government has not been spending enough in the construction sector. The future of construction is one of the biggest challenges that South Africa's economy faces. With a hold on major projects, funding could soon be a problem. A solution could be a private-public partnership. As announced by Gauteng Premier David Makura in May 2020, BMW and Nissan that set up field hospitals in Roslyn would go a long way to help. These kinds of interventions and partnerships are welcomed, but bringing down the spread of infections is priority number one.